Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. Happy Monday, Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, and Cody Del Mendo. We've got five more hot podcasts coming for you at least this week, uh, you know, in case we don't have some sort of breaking news, you know, the breaking news podcast still might not be dead. You never know who might sign with the Cubs yeah. this off season. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've been dropping a lot of new videos there, including our interviews um, from Cubs convention. So you don't want to miss those. Make sure you subscribe, five-star reviews, like Spotify, make sure you're giving the five-star reviews. Uh, we want you guys to catch up to the Apple podcast folks. And uh, don't forget, we've got our goose Island happy hour. Virtual happy hour coming for the diehards this Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, our first one ever. We're going to be here tipping back Goose Islands with you and uh, hopefully see everybody there. We see a pretty good list in the chat coming up today. Oh, yeah. Everybody's on time. We're on time. How are the vibes? How how, how are the vibes after a football weekend? Cody, was it was it uh, a wagering weekend for you? Was it, a, was it profitable? Uh, all the boosts from – our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook hit every yep. single one of them. Oh so, wow! Uh, if you're not using DraftKings Sportsbook, I don't know what you're doing. Probably you're losing a lot of money. You're missing out on chances to make money if you're not doing that. Yeah, probably losing money. <laughs> so someone in the chat is telling me to stop betting against the Chiefs. I bet against the Chiefs two weeks ago, and as I said last Monday, Riley Patterson, his foot deserves to be dipped in gold because he. <laughs> He created the greatest backdoor cover of the year and of the entire football season. So betting against the Chiefs has worked out for me before. Uh, I blame the refs last night. That's my beat, my meatball take of the weekend. Is I blame the refs. So I was hoping that um, NFL I was hoping the fourth string quarterback for the 49ers was actually going to throw a touchdown pass because I knew somebody would make a ton of money on it if it happened. <laughs> somebody that had a prop bet for him throwing a touchdown pass. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh they were good games. Uh I'm even even the first game, it was it was interesting until Purdy got hurt. Uh so um even and even after Purdy got hurt, I kind of thought that 49ers would hang around with their defense alone. But then, uh, what's his name? Josh Johnson, uh, legend Josh Johnson. He oh, just yeah. fumbled the snap on, on a shotgun play call they had, and I think that's what happened. And he like after that, it was just it was over. It was over after that, basically. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know that. I have family who are 49ers fans, so like I felt bad for them. But I also feel like that'd be like the easiest NFC championship to get over if on a losing yeah. side when you have no one to throw to literally throw the ball unless you put Kyle Kyle Ju Jusat Jusek. Kyle Juszczyk. Juszczyk, like Juszczyk. I, I can't say his name. Unless they would have put him at quarterback or just let McCaffrey be like run out of the Wildcat every single time. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, can you, was, can you imagine the Bears playing a fourth string quarterback in the NFC <laughs> Championship uh, game? Most people don't even no. know the quarterback most for the Bears. Caleb Haney, saw, man. Never forget. He almost saw let Brett out. Taylor. Brett Taylor over at Bleacher Nation made the point that, like, if you're looking at it in a Cubs point of view, like the equivalent of losing four quarterbacks it would have to be like, almost two full starting rotations worth of pitchers like in yeah. one season, like season season ending injuries. Like it'd be <laughs> Stroman, Tyone, Smiley, like all the, the, the main five that are going to start the season in the rotation, plus the next five that would be behind him to like match up to what <laughs> the 49ers had to do. Yeah, we do. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, we do have a lot of baseball to get to. We have a lot to talk about, including, you know, what does some other moves around baseball mean for Nico Horner, whether or not he gets an extension this offseason. We'll wait and see. We're going to talk about our friend Justin Steele a little bit, who, by the way, is our uh, sit-down interview coming up later this week uh, from Cubs Convention. Top 100, uh, everybody and their brother has a top 100 prospects list. Another new one drops today. But it's slightly different than the one that came out from another media publication at the end of the week. So we'll compare those two. And uh, then we also want to do start our uh, position rankings or, or ratings or evaluations, however you want to call it. And we're going to start with an interesting one. So stick around with that. But the first topic does sort of that I want to – we don't have to spend a ton of time on this, but it does have a little football tie. 
the greatest thing that happened over the weekend was Travis Kelsey in the post-game mm-hmm. press conference on the field calling out the mayor of Cincinnati. So if we have that, Joey, I just want to play it for a second. For those who haven't heard it, the Cincinnati mayor had been talking a lot of trash, including the Cincinnati players, and this was Travis Kelsey putting them in their place after the game, which was um, – Awesome. Top five trash talking yeah. moment that I've seen. Yeah. I appreciate that. How about this beautiful trophy? Huh? Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. <laughs> you got to fight for your right to party. <laughs> I love Travis Kelsey. Right. He's so great. Don't you wish he was a member of the Bears at some point in his career? That would um, be nice. No, That'd Bears would nice. have ruined him, so no, I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. The Bears would have ruined him. I just it, – it got me thinking. First of all, it reminded me that the Bears are terrible and that it's depressing and that we don't get have, have moments like that. But it also made me think about what we talk about, which is baseball. And for all the people that are old like me that complain and want the old traditional sports to be the way they were 50 years ago – man, I wish trash talking was a real deal thing in baseball. Like stuff like that is amazing. We get it every once in a while, but there's, you don't, you don't see that very often in baseball. And that's fun. When your team's able to do it, it's a lot of fun. Let me tell you, whenever you you do see it in baseball, like it's becoming a more and more of a thing, not nearly as much as you see like in the NFL or even the NBA, no. but like when you do actually see it, in, in baseball, this amazing thing happens. People people talk about the sport and people yeah. talk about the game. And mm-hmm. like it's 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 weird because like uh so many people it when it does happen, the reason people talk about it, it's not because they're supporting the player who's doing it or they're on the other side taking 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 the L. It's people either crying about respecting the game or um, you know, saying like the situation didn't call for it or whatever. Like, for instance, uh, this this last week, I don't know why Ronald Acuna is all over the internet, uh, just playing pickup games back home. But there's been I've seen a lot of videos of it of him just playing pickup baseball, uh, back home, and I I guess uh, I saw a video, and I don't even know if this was la- like recently but i saw a video of this guy who hit a home run in the fourth inning in like the dominican league i think it was ronald acuna and he was just celebrating doing all this stuff and the controversy behind it is just so many people complain about whether or not you should be doing that in the fourth inning of a baseball game and it's just like who cares who cares in my opinion so there's like you know, Law mentions in the chat, did Wilson's bat flip at Sox Park ever land? The one, the See, one that great he threw so great high moment. in the air, yeah. he got it on the camera. <laughs> uh, but, like, I mean, when I, when I think about, like, trash talking, like, the first one that comes to mind was um, 2021, Javi Baez hits the single off Amir yeah. Garrett and, you know, the whole sweeping the broom, all that stuff. And, like, sure, like, the the old heads, like, hate that, you know, it's, it's a gentleman's sport or whatever. Like, not, you're not supposed to be trash. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was cool. And I thought it was like a, it was just a continuation of that rivalry. It didn't lead to any, any, you know, benches clearing or brawls or anything like that. It was just th- those two have their own little rivalry. And it was just a little, you know, have you won that, that iteration of the rivalry and, and did his thing. And then it was up to Amir Garrett to respond to it on the field, right? Like, again, it didn't lead to, they didn't brawl. They didn't fight on the field. They were, you know, they, they left it on the field and that was that. So I know they have had their run ins as far as like, getting each other's faces in the past so not but that's to overlook thing, that like, but just but just that episode remember. itself yeah that's just that episode itself, it was the trash talk and then that was that like there was, yeah. didn't lead to any brawls or anything which even that like brawls whatever that bra- brawls will get more attention on, on baseball itself but if you're like oh we don't want that to lead to fighting and stuff like that well you know what? it was trash talking and they left it on the field and that was that like i thought it was a, it was a cool moment that didn't lead to anything that didn't need to happen yeah the Baez and Amir Garrett stuff is like a great example. Like, yeah, like, sure, perhaps Javi Baez. When people like a lot of people think, especially when he's with the Cubs, a lot of people thought, like, outside of Chicago, a lot of people thought Javi Baez was one of the most overrated players in the league. And to me, 
the reason that they would do it is because the MLB account would always like tweet videos of him. The reason being though is because so many freaking kids loved him. You know what I mean? It had nothing. Honestly, it really had nothing to do with his game. It had everything to do with just his personality and his, you know, hobbyisms, as you could call them, <laughs> on the field. And like that was how they were trying to grow the game. But a lot of people who didn't like him just took it as he was just overrated. Because uh, yeah, he led the league in strikeouts one year, whatever. Uh, but the whole thing with him and Amir Garrett is like, yeah, he like he's well known, like as in bias, but Amir Garrett. I don't think the casual fan would know who Amir Garrett is, but when that stuff happened, like people learned who he was and like it created talk. It created, uh, you know, controversy around like just, you know, two teams and, uh, and, uh, and, and I don't know, like just, it, it created buzz. And that's one thing that's always kind of lacked in baseball compared to the NBA and the NFL. And like, and it all comes down to so many people are just like, you're supposed to hit the ball and run and, and, and do it respectfully. And if you don't do it that way, then you're not doing everything or anything the right way. And it's, it's just like, it gives me an aneurysm, man. It makes me like, <laughs> well, and then here's living shit out of me. It's so yeah. dumb. Like, I want it in golf too. Let's 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 I want guys talking trash and golf on the golf course after somebody misses a putt. Yeah. Right. Well, my thing is whenever people like get mad at the guys, you know, bat flip or celebrate a home run or whatever, it's like, well, the other team should just not have hit let, let up a home run, right? Like that, that's my take is like it's like if you don't want guys celebrating their home runs and don't let up a home run next time. And that's why, like, I remember I, you know, I I was covering the Reds that day, uh, the day after the Amir Garrett Javi Bias thing, talked to Amir Garrett and like credit to him. He's like, you know what, he got me. Like I wasn't gonna start a fire or anything because he got me on that. Like he hit the single, he got the walk off, scored the run. Like he lost he like Amir Garrett knew he lost that day and didn't. I mean, he you know, he didn't really take issue with it because Javi Bias got him right so the, it was up to amir garrett to get him back the next time and that's what it should be it's like if you don't want guys celebrating what they like when they beat you then don't let them beat you that that's my whole thing mm -hmm. is, is is sell it settle it on the, like you don't have to fight about it like settle it on the field as far as don't let up a home run or take it when a guy cranks one off you that, that's that's my take on it yeah i don't need the fights but if whether it's javi last year at guaranteed rate listening to the fans as he, as he rounded the bases was great or Javi against mm -hmm. Amir Garrett or Wilson the bat flip or or whatever. I just hope to see tons of it in the World Baseball Classic. Like yeah. that that's where I really want to see it. That's the next place I'd like to see it carry over. And then I would like the players to enjoy that so much that they take it to the major league level and you don't have a bunch of old people saying, stop mm -hmm. it, stop it, respect the game. Just it's a kid's game. Let let them play it like kids. And if they want to be stupid, well, then they'll regret it when they look stupid the next time around. I, it doesn't like matter. Like Eli Apple, for example. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, that, I, I watched that post-game press conference and I thought, man, how great would that have been when I used to do those end-of-game interviews with a player on the field at Wrigley, you know, what, what if Mark DeRosa would have been like, you got to fight for your right to party. That that's what I want to see in those post game interviews instead of just straight answers. Yeah. The, 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 the Gatorade bath has worn out. So revving up the fans would be something that I would like to see yeah. a little bit more. of. I, I, again, I will say that it it's become, it's a little bit more, I wouldn't say it's fully normalized yet because people still get pissed off about it, but it is becoming more and more uh, of a thing. Uh, at least on like social media, I've seen a lot of players go back and forth, trash shocking on social media. You might not hear it in post game interviews, stuff like that, but you know, baby steps, I guess. I don't. It, it again. It, I don't. I don't want to repeat myself, but they're moving. Uh, they're moving along in the right way. So we'll say, I see in the chat, people are talking about that it gets settled on the field. Like, yeah, if someone yeah. celebrates a home runs and then they get drilled by a fastball to the ribs the next time, you know what? Like, you don't want guys to get hurt with fastball. But it's like sometimes that, that the guys police the game themselves on the field, right? <laughs> um, and that's how it should be. It shouldn't turn into people calling out players for celebrating home runs. So it's like if, if you, know, you, you take your licks on the field between players, that's how that's how it should be policed, at least, right? That's how it used to be. Right. Um just yeah guys take guys take care of their teammates and and you know take care of business on the field uh cody alerted us to a trend going on what is is it is it 
Instagram or is it Twitter, Cody, where people are posting Margot Robbie's picture and then a report from fake report from TMZ saying so and so is dating Margot Robbie. And we and I we saw put it on out, Twitter. Yeah, we put out the one very briefly that had Nico Horner, but it was because Nico's so damn good looking, we had to take it down because we thought, well, people might actually believe this. Then, <laughs> mm-hmm. then some guy goes and puts up a Jack Sanborn from the Bears one and he gets like 700 likes. So or impressions or whatever that, that stuff is called. So now I'm wondering who is dating Margot Robbie? I don't know the answer to that. And it's actually me. It's it, actually well, see, me. That's why we had to take it down because like, you know, someone hacked, someone hacked the CHGO Cubs account yesterday and tweeted it out. And I was like, who had the audacity to do that? What a moron. I mean, what are you doing, man? Like, so we had to renew the password and just, you know, I had to, yeah. I had to put a, a full statement uh, with, you know, run on sentences out there for everyone to know that uh i am in fact dating margot robbie um cassidy <laughs> Dustin Allen says no she's keep, in the court. Just keep moving along the, don't take yeah, just, just keep just keep listening this you're, you're we'll just like we'll listening. we'll cut out this part specifically for cassidy's podcast feed that's not right, anyone that's else right. she won't she won't hear that, that part, part. Yeah. exactly she'll only know about the pair of jordans you gave her for her birthday that's it absolutely that's, that's the last thing she'll yeah. see on her feed uh, <laughs> yeah. i wondered like who would have to – could we put in there that would be so obviously not that person that it would be funny? And the first person I thought of was Ronnie Woo Woo. But is there anybody else that we could say is dating Margot Robbie that would be fun? Michael Rucker. Me. Michael Rucker. <laughs> Jonathan VR, not on the team anymore. Oh, but <laughs> the VR slander is not – it's not fair. It's not fair. He was a good player for a long time. We bring him, um, up, every, so anyways, we bring him up every thing, show. Luke. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. It's not yeah. funny. Um, Everyone's so saying thing, Carm the, in the, the chat. The thing about is Nico is that I I didn't want to totally talk about him today, but then when McNeil went and signed an extension over the weekend with the Mets. What was it? Uh, 50 million, 60 million, four years, 50 million with the Mets. You know, it got me to thinking, well, he was the batting champ. But would that impact any negotiations for Nico? Would Nico's? I don't. I don't know if it impacts his negotiation or not, it, or even if there is one. You know, mm-hmm. and and if I'm a player, I just don't know. I just don't know how many guys or when a guy is going to bet on himself and just play it out versus taking the Kyle Hendricks deal and be like, you know what, that's still a lot of money and we're still going to be fine. And I might as well take the security of that. I don't know which guy Nico is. And I don't know if the Cubs are really offering an extension right now, but when you see McNeil get that, I think to myself, even though he was higher than Nico Horner in these alleged lists that came out that we went through and I told you were fraudulent. uh, He's every bit as good as McNeil. And in my eyes, he's better. So, I, you know, I, I question what, how Nico believes the, I want to believe that Nico is for, for his sake, obviously looking at it for him, but also looking at it from a team perspective, as in, you know, if I, if he takes this, this, you know, this contract extension now, uh, opposed to just pl- going through arbitration every year, um, I think he would be more likely to take an extension now or in spring training, whenever, if he was fully on board for, you know, believing in what the Cubs are, you know, are trying to push to the team in terms of what they're trying to do and, and being successful. And if he doesn't believe in it, then, you know, I will never know. He's never going to say it, but that, that might be something that might linger in the back of my head is, does he believe that, you know, he wants to even be here long term? So I don't know. It's, it's tough. I I don't think the McNeil contract really matters. It's not like he got an outlandish amount of money. Mm -hmm. He's also significantly older. So, you know, he had a, he won the batting champ or batting title. So he's cashing in on his big year. Um, You know, maybe, Maybe Nico thinks he can have an even better year and, and get a better contract extension after next mm-hmm. season. I don't know. Uh, but I I think, and this is me saying it selfishly, that he would take one now for the betterment of the team and not letting it become a distraction, I guess. But 
again, I, I don't blame him if he wouldn't do that. I, I, yeah. I said it, we've said it about every player, they have the right to decide on that kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of how I feel about it. If he fully believes on the direction of the Cubs, then I feel like he might take one now. Yeah. What um, about what Barbara and, and some other folks in, in the chat are saying about like, you know, the injury side of it. Do yeah. you think that factors into the Cubs decision and their perspective on extension talks that he's, he's been banged up a little bit. Yeah. I, I think it factors in on both sides. It could factor in because yeah, it, it really out of what he debuted in 19 at the end of 19 and, you know, played 20, 21. Like this is the first full season really that he was healthy for most of it. And um, like, he still had injury. He still had that, you know, the freak accident, whatever in May was this one thing, but he had that tricep injury um, later in the season that kept him out for a few weeks. I think I could factor in the, on both sides in the fact that like Nico, the, the Cubs may look at it like, Hey, we're willing to give you this much money right now. You know, b- before you, you had, you've had one full season of, of health. And, but we want to give you this money because we believe in you. Uh, but then Nico could also, on, on the flip side, think like, hey, yeah, you know what, like, I believe in my body, but they're giving me this money now. Or he might say like, you know what, I want to go and prove that I can be healthy. I want to go out and prove that those injury, mm-hmm. my injury history, quote unquote, that is weighing me down or or causing the Cubs to offer me less money. I want to go out and prove that I can stay healthy for another season and show you that those injuries, that history is, you know, history. It's not, it's not what affects me now. I could see Nico feeling that way, but I could also see him being like, you know what? Like you said earlier, Lou, this is a good amount of money. We're going to be like, the, the money is there. Could I pot- potentially get money in a couple of years? Sure. But right now we're getting a lot of money and it's good enough. It's going to keep me set for the rest of my life. Like that kind of, that kind of mentality. I could see Nico having that mentality because he likes being here, likes being on the Cubs, wants to help build a winner and wants to be committed to the, you know, to this team. So um, the injury history it de- definitely, might impact it a little bit, but uh, I guess we'll kind of have to see how that plays out. Yeah. And if he started dating uh, Margot Robbie, probably wouldn't need an extension because, you know, they'd be sharing a lot of money, just yeah, like uh, Justin money. Verlander and Kate Upton. Uh, so should we do our, our first position evaluation? You want to, you want to do that real quick before we get to break? Cause it's not like I, I, the first one I picked is not, um, it's not a sexy position DH, right? Like, DH, how would you evaluate the Cubs? How would you evaluate the Cubs at DH going into this season? If you had to give them a, a letter grade, what would you look at? I mean, realistically, who are we talking about? You know, it, it's Trey Mancini okay. for sure is is somebody they'll probably do some DHing, right? Yeah. Uh, who else do you think you'll see at DH? Morel? Uh, Madrigal? <laughs> don't say that. the thing is like there's going to be a lot of guys that you probably see rotating in at dh which is yeah. like maybe that's the new normal in, in baseball now but yeah. i mean like even a few years ago you had guys that you know didn't play in the field they dh every single game and that was that was their role on the team and with the cubs you don't really have that you have guys you have platoons that like hey this guy's playing first base today you know Hosmer's playing first base today so we're gonna have to dh mancini Oh, you know, Patrick wasn't playing third today, so we might have to DH Morrell or the other way around, right? Um, it, it is weird considering like you don't really know what to expect from a lot of the guys. A lot of the guys right there are question marks, right? Can Christopher Morrell kind of rebound from he, you know, he had a the second half wasn't as good as his first half. Can he kind of find that spark that he had when he started, right? Can Patrick Wisdom keep up the home run totals while lowering his strikeouts? Is Nick Madrigal a good hitter in the major leagues that can stay healthy, right? Like, there's a lot of question marks and a lot of those guys are going to end up probably hitting at DH at some point this season, just because all the Cubs are trying to get all those guys in the, <laughs> the at bats, there's not a whole lot of room on the roster outside of like DH. So, so you're not going to have your everyday number one DH guy. You're going to have a few guys rotating in and that's where it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel, it's going to feel weird. And, and I don't know exactly what to expect from that right now. Yeah. I think wisdom Mancini Mervis, all make sense as as DH guys throughout the season, but because of what Ryan is saying, um, if I had to put a, a letter grade myself on it, I would say C because they don't clearly have a guy that fits the mold as the big bopper DH, who you you know they don't have their Eloy Jimenez, who's a clear 
home run hitter who you really don't want in the field anywhere, right? Like yeah. they have Hosmer's not that guy. Hosmer's good defensively. He's got multiple gold gloves and he also isn't the huge home run guy. So they might, I'm not saying they're, they're poor at the position. I just, they're not, uh, they're not the typical DH guys that are for the Cubs. So is it a spot that could improve in the next few years? Absolutely. So that's why I put it at a C. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably put it at a C as well. But I think there's a there's a ceiling that could, you know, by mid season we could be saying, wow, the Cubs are really good at, at that position. Mm-hmm. D- depending on, you know, certain guys' player performance, of course. Uh obviously they have op- they have options. Um, I think I think this start of the year you'll probably see Mancini there a lot. Uh, and then depending on, you know, player struggles or player, uh, you know, if a certain player is out is playing so well that you got to play him every day, you know, then you could see a, a guy, Patrick Wis- Wisdom being there. Um, I don't think Morrell is someone that we'll see there a ton. Um, Hosmer, I, I doubt it. So I would say Wisdom or Mancini are your, your top two at that position right now. And if they use wisdom in DH one day, then that would give them the opportunity to play morale at third to get them both in there if they wanted to. So uh, it's, I, I give it a C just because I just don't know who's doing it every day. Kind of like what you said, Luke, with Aloy on the other side of town. Like I know he wants to play some outfield, but if the White Sox are smart, they should be DH in that guy every single day. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, is what it is. I'm the, but I, I'm I'm interested to see if I were to look at every team in the league, like how many teams are using the same DH every game. Uh, I I don't know if over half the league is doing that. So especially in the National League because it's still new in the National League, and I think teams are still when I'm not saying adjust, but with the way that a lot of teams in the National League have historically done things, it's it, it it's something that I feel like teams just haven't gotten to that full AL style, I guess, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not everybody's got a Vogelbach, right? Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. everybody has the perfect guy to put in that uh in that position. Anyways, um I mean even the about- Phillies, everyone al- always thought Schwarber was always just your DH, but I mean the guy got good enough defensively where they pl- mm-hmm. they could play him in the outfield. Mm-hmm. And even though the DH is now in the National League, the Phillies still play him in the outfield more than they do DH. So I know that'll probably change as it gets older, but you know, it, it's it's just not so black and white with no. With it. Castellanos is another guy, but like for the Cubs, you know, everybody wants to say it's the first baseman. I think it's it's Mancini and Mervis more than it's Hosmer. I feel like oh, yeah. if Hosmer's in the game, or if he's playing that day, he's going to be the first baseman because he's the best glove at first base. So I don't know why. He would, he, you know, I don't see this too many scenarios for him at DH in my, in my opinion. Um, anyway, Cody, we got to get to some ads. What's going on with the, with the NBA and draft Kings and what kind of wagers are you looking at this week? Well, guys, uh, they got a no sweat, same game parlay mm-hmm. on draft Kings tonight that you can, you know, I don't know what the limit it's probably up to $10. But all you got to do is opt in, you put $10 down on some same game parlay. And if it doesn't hit, then you get your money back in a free bet. So you're not losing anything. So it's a cool thing. Uh, NBA fans, it's time to bring the hoops action to the palm of your hand with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet $5 and win $200 in free bets instantly. Plus, for a limited time, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. I literally just said that. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, opt-in, and place the same-game parlay on any NBA game. And if it doesn't hit, you'll get a free bet back. Uh, I don't really have one crafted yet. It was something I'm going to do after this show. Um, the, the Bulls don't play tonight. So, you know, admittedly, when it comes to the NBA, I, I, I don't watch all across the league as much as a lot of people. So, uh, I all I know is – you opt in, you put ten dollars down on some same game parlay, and if it doesn't hit, then you can get your bet back. And that's that's one of the beauties about DraftKings Sportsbook. So uh, download the app now and sign up with code CHGO. Again, new customers can bet five dollars on the NBA and get two 
hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. Started taking AG1 because I didn't have time, wanted better gut health, more energy, and an optimized immune system. Now I've been on it for almost a full year, and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. Oh, no, it's got a tropical taste, and it is super healthy. So I take it first thing in the morning. Here's what it is. One scoop of AG1, you absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. A special blend of ingredients supporting your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, aging, all those things. I get a noticeable boost of energy, so that's what I do first thing in the morning on an empty stomach and giddy up. Lifestyle friendly too, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, you're all good with AG1 investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance for less than three bucks a day. Recommended by professional athletes right now, reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. You don't need to take a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs when you go to get away with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Cubs. Again, athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Cubs. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, so, did you guys see? Did you? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say Barbara is asking in the chat who the Cubs you who's the Cubs utility infielder, and uh, as we've talked, as we've talked in recent weeks, there's more than just one at the current moment. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see how they, you know, cut cut down on the roster in the spring. But uh, I would say right now it's a mixture of Magical and and uh, McKentry with uh, Mash Mas- Mas- Boney Boney, yeah. as yeah. a as a minor league minor league depth piece as well. Um, but who knows at the, again, who knows what's going to happen with and that. morale a little bit. Yeah. You know, and David Bodie's also in, in triple a too, at least technically on like, as far as roster right now, and obviously has plenty of major league experience. So yeah, but yeah, they have a lot of guys. That I hope we don't have to see a ton. That's all I can say. But good depth off the bench is important. So it'd be even more helpful for the Cubs if one of the three or four guys that we just mentioned really has some sort of breakout season, like or has the best season of their career. Like that would be helpful to this team if one of those players could step out of that group and show that they are clearly the person they're looking for they're looking for the ben zobrist of the future if one of those guys could highlight himself as that with a great season that would be helpful for the cubs as a franchise for sure yeah um did you guys see justin Steele having a good time he was at a party you know left yeah. the baby at home and went and had some cocktails it looked like maybe this weekend he uh his wife uh i think it's his wife it's either his wife or his girlfriend uh put the put the video up on her instagram story Saturday night and uh he put it he then put it on his Instagram story from her and that's how I saw it and I just thought it was the funniest thing because you've never seen I've never seen Justin Steele in, in that in that mode before. Uh he was defining what vibes were uh when I talk about vibes on this podcast. Uh yeah, he quote tweeted quote tweeted us yesterday uh when we tweeted the video. He said, uh what did he say? Parent uh Parents don't parents get out don't very get out, often yeah. anymore. <laughs> right. Well, I know what that's like. And also then he was on uh, our friend, uh, the show, Rich Biesterfeld, had pictures of him yesterday or today out in Arizona. So he's already in Arizona. Um, a lot of – based on Rich's pictures, it looks like a lot of young guys are out in Arizona already. Um, and he was throwing a football around because we know how much he loves football. And uh, – and then he he reposted Rich uh, Biesterfeld's photo saying, yeah, and it was the Uncle Rico thing. I could throw that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, it, it was a funny thing that I saw in the clip. Now, something I saw on the internet that I didn't like was what uh, Corey and Brendan were talking about in Friday's 
podcast where they went uh, with Greg Huss talking about where MLB Pipeline has some of the prospects ranked. And everybody has the same three in the top 100 for the Cubs. Literally, I think if you went to your next door neighbor and said, hey, who's your top 100 prospects? They would list those three in the top 100 just in a different spot. But uh, and Keith Laws came out today and he had Brendan Davis at 50. But what they were talking about with Greg Huss was that now MLB Pipeline has moved Brendan Davis because of injuries last year down into the 90s. Yeah, That doesn't, 92, it doesn't right? seem fair for mm-hmm. a guy. I know everybody loves PCA, and I love the idea of PCA. But just because a guy was hurt for a year doesn't mean he's not still the top prospect in the organization necessarily either. Right. Like, I'm not evaluating him versus PCA. I'm just saying, how does a guy go from 28 in Keith Laws to 50 this year? And I don't know where he was in MLB Pipeline last year, but to go from knocking on the door of the major leagues, the Cubs' top prospect, down to in the 90s, Mm -hmm. I hope he makes them eat their words. He was a top 20 prospect in all of baseball going into last season and then moved down in the middle of the season – because of injury, and then just now this newest ranking from MLB Pipeline moved him into the nineties. Then into the nineties. I'm pretty sure that's how it played out from a you know time frame. Uh, so as far as MLB's ranking, my my two cents is that you know there's just a lot of really good prospects coming up. So. You know, he didn't he didn't have anything to show last year. He didn't when he played, he didn't play well, and then he was hurt. Um, and so, you know, you see you see other guys from other organizations, you know, take a bigger step. So that's honestly that's just, to me that's that's kind of how things work out. Ryan tweeted it out like the rankings, and I quote tweeted and said, "I hope someone takes this tweet and slabs it on his locker and puts a chip on his shoulder, man." Like. He's got a lot to prove. A lot of people – I mean, I know he's still in the top 100, but to fall from a top 20 prospect all the way to almost outside the top 100, to me that's that's telling. And so I hope – not that he needs any motivation, but I hope it's just extra motivation for him going into spring. Uh, as you said, with Rich and his photos, he's already in Arizona. That's awesome to hear. So I, I, hope, I hope he's – he saw this and has a huge chip on his shoulder to prove like, Hey, I was, I was, I was almost here. So that's, that's my two cents on, on MLB's rankings. And, you know, yes. with, with Keith law, I guess it made me feel a little bit better, but whatever. <laughs> I, I don't, you, we've talked about this before. I just, everyone has different uh, opinions on rankings and stuff. I, I, and I've said before, I don't follow the minor leagues like guys like Greg Huss and, and Greg Zumak like enough to know like, oh, this guy is far and away a top fifty, and this guy's, you know, he should be outside the top one one hundred for this guy. Like, I, I'm I'm always going to be honest about it, and I, and and I'm just glad the Cubs have the three in there. I you know some people can argue that maybe more deserve to be in, but again, every organization has good good prospects coming up. Almost every good yeah. organization does. So. Uh, that's the way that I look at it to keep myself from getting too high and too low on it. Yeah. Well, what I, my two cents, the Brennan Davis part of it is like the fall from, I don't remember exactly how high he was ranked last year, but the fall all the way to 92, it seems unfair. Like Lou was saying, like it, it, it feels like a little too steep to completely knock a guy that, you know, had the, the June back surgery. Like that was affecting him clearly was affecting him before that affected his ability to play. Um, and then, you know, the Arizona Fall League. So uh, he he ended, I think it was five games in the Arizona Fall League before um, he told us at the Cubs convention that he kind of just felt some soreness and just figured it wasn't the time to push it at that point, at that point in the season. So I think the biggest knock or the biggest reason for the, uh, you know, MLB pipeline to be putting him as low as 92 is because he missed pretty much the entire season with injuries. And, you know, anytime you hear back surgery, it's never a great thing, even though the Cubs said, for what it was, it was the best case scenario, and um, not structural, but, right? It's yeah, not, not structural. It, he doesn't have a disc problem. I said yeah. disc problem. <laughs> it, it was like a vascular thing. Like it, it had nothing to do yeah. with the guy having like a traditional back problem. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't like like I said. It was, as far as when you hear the words back surgery, 
Um, it was kind of best case scenario in that sense, and the Cubs have said that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how, and, it, and like I'm, I'm not a prospect guru. I don't know how someone gets dropped was it sixty some spots uh, in just the matter of a season. Um, but obviously, you know, I'm the only pipeline sees things differently than I do or than we do, right? Um, but in terms of like why the Cubs only have three prospects in the top 100 in most top 100s. I would, I mean, I think there's just so many guys. And the Cubs have a lot of good prospects. They don't have a ton of superstar, can't miss guys. They don't, they don't really have any of those, but they don't have um, a ton of just, like, guys. Yeah, at least that are ready. But they do have really good prospects in there that that really have built up this depth in the farm system. And you might have a few guys that are just like a few steps back of being in that top 100, like maybe in the top, like, you know, in the one the one like just past the hundred one tens, one twenties, even like guys that with good seasons could, could rise into that top 100 pretty quickly. Um, but they're just, they're, you know, borderline, they're barely outside of the top 100, right? We don't know those, those, those lists don't rank beyond 100. So we don't know where some of these other Cubs prospects landed. Um, but I can see that there's a few um, that with good seasons could find themselves in the top 100 pretty quickly. I mean, a guy like uh, Kate Horton's so high on a lot of these, these lists. I mean, he was number four uh, in MLB pipelines rankings. He didn't, didn't even play a game when they updated it last season. He didn't play a game in the Cubs system, and he was number four for the Cubs. So if he has, he comes out and he balls out in the minor leagues. He might, he might find himself in the top 100 pretty quickly, right? Like so, that's yeah. things like that change. Um, and just just because the Cubs only have three top 100 doesn't mean they don't have a lot of of, of pretty good prospects in that system. I, I guess if just, there's one guy that. I'm surprised hasn't been able to sneak into that top 100 from the Cubs, not named Alcantara Davis or PCA is someone like Jordan Wicks, just because he was a first round pick a few years ago. And from all accounts and from people that we've talked to, you know, a lot of people are excited about him and what he can potentially be. And not just like all the prospect guys who follow Cubs prospect systems, all say starting pitcher. And so, you know, lefty, first round pick. I, I what 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 is he missing that's keeping people from keeping him out? I don't fully know. So uh, again, I'm on the outside looking in, and I don't follow it as closely. But that's one guy that I've I've been surprised to see that he hasn't made it into the top 100. Yeah, I just I think, think there's too many lists. Period. Yeah, there's too many. Lists. Like like I said, everybody's got a list. Why don't we just do a list? We haven't seen any of them play, but we'll, it's real we'll easy. We'll look at Brendan Davis and say he didn't play last year, so let's drop him fifty <laughs> times. Like a lot of work. Whatever. Who? We'll we'll get you I, on that. That's your that's your project for the preseason. I'll put out my my fraud list of just like list put out list for list list because it draws clicks like some of them are legit some of them are the one thing that keith law did post that i found interesting in his little article and again he suggested that brendan davis since bulking up had lost his speed and now projected as a right fielder could project as a right fielder which raised my eyebrows because say is in right for the near future right like mm -hmm. and Yes, I could see how he could come up this year and really impress. And if they decided to move on from Ian Happ in left field, I could see Brennan Davis playing some left field. But the position that's open right now is center field. Until until PCA arrives, center mm -hmm. field is the one that's open. I know Cody Bellinger is there. It's just it's interesting to see how players' bodies develop and somewhere where you thought a guy was going to be he might not necessarily be when he gets there. So I'm I'm not gonna pin I'm not gonna pin him down or pencil him down for any specific position in the outfield other than to say a non-structural back injury seems to me like a long way to drop a guy for someone who hasn't had back injuries outside of that. It's not it's not Anthony Rizzo having a back injury at the major league level that creeps up every year back injury, back injury, back injury. This is the guy had something develop and it bothered him for a whole year and it took his year away, but they think they have it solved. Uh, I, I see we have a super chat. Yes, we do. The Duke 811. I see him in the Bears podcast stream all the time on YouTube, sending them large amounts. So I appreciate it. Duke giving us some money, right? $9.99. Good afternoon. The barn's too small. I can't see it. Can you guys read it? Yeah, Cody's got <laughs> it. 
Good afternoon, Cubs bros. This pod mentally puts me in a warm, wriggly seat, drink, drinking a stupidly expensive beer. You ain't Fair wrong enough. there. Keep Fair doing the Lord's work. Season can't come soon enough. Yeah, man. I, Thank you, I, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Share it and agree. The season. See, like I'm starting to get a little antsy, knowing that like the season's almost here. Was it 60 days from like six today? Days, yeah, you know? 60 it's, days from today, opening day. We're getting there. We're getting Pitchers there. Pitchers and catchers, Ryan, getting real close for, for the, the next si- two weeks. I want to say it's it's absolutely freezing in Chicago today. So yeah, I'm counting down the days to the spring because I am over this. I'm so yeah. over this cold. Let's just get to Arizona. Keep sending super chats so we can all go to Arizona. Please. <laughs> well, and not only that, it's just like even just the pictures from Rich, like people that are tweeting stuff out and, and photographs and stuff. Something about seeing somebody in warm weather on green grass, uh, even if they're wearing like a warm up or something, it makes you feel like it's not not that far off. Right. Yeah. 59 days, 60 days. Granted, I know it. it the first time you're at Wrigley Field this year, we all know you're going to be in a snowsuit. You're going to be in a Carhartt, like like the full overalls and, and giant boots, because that's what happens for the first two months of the season. But something about those first days of spring training and then seeing the Cactus League games makes you feel like, ah, oh, it's, it's not that far off. I think that's big for Chicagoans because we go through such a miserable, long winter that that's like – that's the carrot they're hanging out in front of us is that look at sunshine, warm weather. It exists somewhere. You can go. I don't know. I hope, I hope it comes soon. Um, what do we got? Uh, ComEd facility. ComEd. Right, let me, let me find my ad read here. Friends at ComEd facility. Here we go. The ComEd energy efficiency program committed to helping families and businesses in the communities. We serve, save money and energy. ComEd offers free facility assessments that can help find energy saving opportunities whether it's lighting, HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs that can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on right away. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and Simple payback. Don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today. For energy saving tips and to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Ready to sign up for a facility assessment? You can call them at 1-855-433-2700. That's 855-433-2700 during normal business hours to speak with a ComEd Energy Efficiency Program representative. You can also email them at business ee at comed.com or request an assessment online on their website comed.com slash facility assessment barbara says they need to serve jaeger bombs at at wrigley warm me up i mean you know maybe maybe just maybe i'm not reporting anything but maybe they have jaeger bombs at the DraftKings sportsbook when it opens up right Like we don't know that. It's but. a touchy subject for Cubs fans right now, Ryan. How dare you? <laughs> because DraftKings Sportsbook is the official betting partner of CHGO in all city. That's why. Uh, the ah. stage is set, and we're counting down to the battle in Arizona. There's no better way to get ready for the NFL action than with the DraftKings Sportsbook, official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57. New customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly, plus all new and exciting customers and existing customers, sorry, can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your Super Bowl 57 winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Discuss, I mean, talk about the, the step, the stepped up same game parlays. I've been doing them a lot and I've won a couple, right? Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're tough. I want to say Zach Levine keeps letting me down on those bold sa- stepped up same game parlays. Um, but I won, I won one uh wild card weekend. Uh, it was the it was on the Chiefs game. I don't remember exactly what legs it was, but it was like you had two touchdown scores in there. A nice little chunk of change for like five bucks, right? So, um, yeah, that- I had one leg miss. I had I had a parlay, and I needed Juju Smith Schuster to get fifty yards receiving, and he didn't come close. I think yeah. he got hurt too. So. Yeah, he got hurt. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't help. But and I was, I mean I I had in one. I mean it didn't hit anyway, but like the Isaiah Pacheco. 
I had him as a touchdown scorer in there, and then he scored one, and then I got called back for holding, I think, or something. And mm-hmm. but like it didn't end up working out anyway, so I'm not as mad about it. But it was like I was I was kind of pissed at the moment. I feel uh, it. Yeah, been there. Yeah. So <laughs> download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code CHGO. New customers can bet five dollars on Super Bowl Fifty Seven and get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. Thank you very much. <sighs> Did you see, uh, notice uh, our friend of the show, Michael Cerami, say, hey, the Cubs could use a uniform update, which got people all fired up. <laughs> on Twitter. Do you feel like they need – you need, think they need anything new? Not the he was talking new. about bringing those. Them to touch the home uniform, by the you way. You know, our friend Mike Cerami, he got what he wanted. He wanted engagement on his tweet. He gave, he gave his hot take. He got it. But I disagree. <laughs> I think I mean, the white pinstripes are classics, and they'll never go out of style. Um, I think he's he, talking about the red bill hats. I thought that's what I he thought, was talking about. I think those were two. I different. I don't want the red bill hat. Was there I two different were, tweets? I think those were two different tweets. I think uh, he, okay. the one he was talking about was like the main home, and that well, that's why people were like upset about it. <laughs> people were. I think were it's mad. because they don't wear a lot of throwbacks. Like no. they'll wear the the city connect on Friday home games. Yeah. And then they wear the you know the the pinstripes uh, at home as well. Now they used to wear like those alternate blues at home, but they don't do that anymore. So I think what yeah. he's asking is for like, like just a little bit of a a like you don't always have to wear the pinstripes at at home games, even though you know it's a top five uniform in baseball in my opinion uh, for home games. But you know I wouldn't be. I personally would just like to see more throwbacks. You know what I mean? Like, like bring over back the those city connect, those it, over the one. city connect one, Cody, like over the, the, the Wrigleyville one, you know, again, they, they wear those on Fridays. So, I mean, yeah. any other day of the week, man, like, yeah. <laughs> and they don't have to do it every week. I'm, I'm asking for like w- once a month, something like that. You know what I mean? Cause nothing beats the pen drives at home on a summer day. At Wrigley, like Great. it really nothing really beats it. But I thought I the way I read his tweet about the uniform thing was about you know just a little switch it up every now and then. You don't always have to wear those. And you know, I get it, like they wear the city connects on Fridays, but I'm asking for just like a throwback once a month, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like it's those. not the home one, it's the road uniform that I think could use an update. And I can't I remember who the player too. was that we talked to. I might have been Keegan Thompson, but I'm not I honestly yeah. I don't remember who it was. Somebody was raving, one of the players was raving about how classic and how sweet the gray, all gray road uniforms are. Like they they love the road uni. I'm not as I'm not as into it. Um it, they've had it for a while. I would love to see them go back to one of two things. Um, one, the white pants from the 80s, and then the v-neck sleeves like think andre dawson ryan sandberg yeah, right like, like the, the, the red yeah, and like white a, trim yeah, almost like kind a pullover like, v-neck right yeah i like that and then i've also lo- would like to see them just like instead of doing the uh city connect ones like they do on friday at home let's say it's a friday on the road i'd like to see them do set a standard where they have tw- 10 times a year the old like 78 to 81 powder blue uniform pants and Jersey Mm -hmm. with the white pinstripes and the number on the front. Like I I picture Bill Buckner in this uniform and, Mm -hmm. and it was a love hate at that time for people with that uniform because it sort of looked like kids pajamas, (laughs) but there was some, now everything is, you know, you get so much retro stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I look at that and go, wow, that, that would or, be a high need, on some road games. I need the powder blues. I think powder. I think every team in baseball should have some version of powder blue uniform. I think those look the mm-hmm. best. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just Cardinals, need the really I hate cool. to say it. The powder blue is oh, a pretty the cool uniform. Cardinals have great ones. The Phillies have really awesome powder blue uniforms. Like the I don't want every really team ones. though, because then powder blue will like run its course, and then it won't be I, cool anymore. I think every team should have it, but I think but the Cubs <laughs> has some really good ones. Was it like They're the seventies? The 70s and and they bring them back every once in a while. Like I know I've seen pictures with, you know, current day Cubs wearing the powder blues, and I think they still look super cool. Uh, it's, it, that should be a jersey the Cubs wear at least once a year. Yeah, 
That I or, also would not yeah. be upset if they just wore the Field of Dreams uni once a year. That that uni was yeah. awesome. I, I do like I do like when I think of old Ernie Banks photos and and Ron Santo. You used to see like um, it almost looked like a flannel, like a gray flannel. You know, almost like um, Roy Hobbs ish, right? Like, but it didn't even look like the, the normal fabric that you see in a uniform. It looked like it was a flannel gray. And it would say Chicago. I'm cool with that. The other one I don't want to see is the one that Sammy used to wear, where it like is cursive Cubs wow, across the, the chest. The that was a terrible uniform. Mm. You know, terrible. Like so a lot of people. That one like I don't it. mean. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I like the. I like the jersey the way it is. I just want a little bit more throwback implemented. Like, I don't. I don't think they need to change the the actual jersey though. I like those blue alternates, and I would actually be excited if they wore, started wearing those at home again. So, Doug, Doug, sends he, Doug oh, said he wants high socks back, and yeah. I kind of I like I like high socks. I do too. I always say when when they wear the City Connects on Fridays, they got to have the high socks to make the uniform immaculate vibey, immaculate vibe. <laughs> you will have immaculate vibes okay. if you show the high socks on Friday one twenties. In the, yeah. in the Wrigleyville unis because those powder blue socks, they're so awesome. They're so awesome. I went and bought a pair. I never wear them because they literally are baseball socks and come up to your knees and I have no reason to wear them, <laughs> but I, they're cool though. I, I like CHGO them. softball games. There you go. Like, oh, see that might, that might be the thing to take down some of the big boys in softballs. If you know, you can't just have everybody show up in different, different stuff yeah. or chgo t-shirts you need to go out and buy a jersey that has some kind of sick vibe to it you mm. everybody's got to have the pants and the shirt even the people that are filling in everybody's got to be dressed oh, yeah. the same way if look we wanna, good play good if we want to if we want to get past odyssey next season <laughs> i think that's the first step <laughs> you gotta look yeah you look good you play good i think that's mm. what Adbert always said right you look good yeah. you feel good you play good mm-hmm is it Odyssey or is it Audacity? I don't. I always get those two confused. What's um, the difference, Luke? <laughs> real quick before we go, did you see that SB Nation had uh, an article about who's going to replace Chip Carey? Uh, and they had oh, suggested people. That. Okay, and this was a couple days ago. And on that list, they had two Chicago names. They had Boog because he did the Braves games from like 07 to. 2009, 2010-ish maybe. And then they also – so I thought, well, that would be crazy. Why would he go back, leave leave the great gig that he's got at Marquee where he really has to do about half the games and then the rest he goes and does his national stuff. Mm-hmm. And But the, the article lost its credibility because they missed the fact – one of the other names on the list, high on the list, was Jason Benetti. And he they literally just put out a press release days before that saying – Jason Benetti has re- re-upped with the White Sox. So is Steve Stone. So it's like, come on, man. Like, you got to at least pay attention to who's off the market completely. Mm. I, See, S- we're talk- is this the SB Nation Cubs website? No, I think, it's, I think it's a, like, Atlanta one. And oh, okay. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that Boog would be able to get out of his deal at Marquee, even if he wanted to go mm. back to the Braves. Mm. Yeah, I mean – I guess he'd probably have more fun in Atlanta in terms of calling the games because that team has World Series aspirations. But, like, I don't know. Well, but give it a couple of years, right? Right. Well, hopefully we're stealing their players one player at a time, starting with Dansby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, if he did leave, I don't think many fans would be upset, but I don't know who they'd replace him with. I really don't. Well, I saw Barber suggest, what about Chip's twin sons that have been doing it in the minor leagues together? And that would be a huge jump. Mm -hmm. But it would be kind of cool for another member of the Carey family, you know, the third generation to be there calling it because uh, I also I I guess if you went Mm -hmm. in 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 the organization, I think Alex Cohen is great for Iowa Cubs. I think you, you wouldn't be a big name that like jumps out to anyone but I, I do think that he deserves to be doing something other than minor league baseball uh but he i think he's great so mm-hmm. yeah, but like, again i don't Boog, Boog ain't going anywhere i'm just saying if he actually did uh i don't i genuinely don't think a lot of fans would be upset because he just hasn't been here long enough 
for us to either fall in love with him or just completely hate him. So he's just right there in the middle right now. Uh, Doug says, I'll trade Boog for Acuna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, now, that, that now you're talking. Like That's big that brain like stuff trade. right there. <laughs> does sound like a good trade if you I'll can trade pull that Boog one off. For, I'll trade Boog yes. for Michael Harris. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks to everybody that was in the chat today. Uh, how many likes did we end up with? Did we get enough likes? I don't know what the official number would be. Oh, so I can't see it. No, I can't see it either. Joey will let us know. Well, we should. Anyway, before thanks, you leave, uh, click that like button. Before you leave, click the yeah, like button. Sure before you go, button. make sure you give us a five star review. Holy whoa, shit, he's got whoa, a super chat. Whoa, whoa. Oh, the my dude God. Won't let us end the show. The he Duke. says for 50 bucks, Boog can go bring back Len. White Sox aren't going to do anything for a long time. Also, here's some dough for the CHGA softball <laughs> uniform. My man. I my man. man. Duke. The Duke. Duke Honestly, yeah, let's use that money so we can go to spring training. Everyone uh, tell Jake and Kevin, thank you. <laughs> the Duke the Duke quickly rising up the CACO Cubs uh, yes. chess rankings. Absolutely. That'll do it. That'll put you at the top. In fact, yeah, 50 bucks. I mean, we should, you know, that could get us uniforms or we could run it on DraftKings, you know, for some Super Bowl bets. And we might double that or triple that. Just an idea. Perhaps. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sports book. Make sure you download the app. Use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. We'll see you back here 120 live on YouTube coming up on Tuesday. Until then, fly the W.